Hey, what is up everyone? It's Rich. All right, welcome to 10 Minutes With. Uh, this is gonna be really cool. So this, we're gonna do Walter Simonson today. We're running through an influence chain that basically started at Jack Kirby and Milton Kniff and has moved forward um, to Jim Stranko, John Romita Sr., Sal Buscema, Paul Gulesi, um, and uh, Walter Simonson had been recommended again and again and again. I spotted one very funny thing. Let me point it out to you really quick. He forgot a black right up here. <laughs> <laughs> As I was getting ready to do the video, it's so let me grab a brush. It's right here. Uh, wait, what did it do? Brush. Why is that working? Brush. What the fuck? Yeah, right in there. There's a little X that was missing. <laughs> um, <laughs> the inker in me will will not let it go. Um, but um, yeah. So Walter Simonson is incredible. He's very iconic. He's very influential. His stuff is very stylized. I was definitely um, picking up on um, like European influences in his stuff and just some really interesting stuff. I'd be curious if he was into like Michaluzzi. Um, uh, there's uh, Dino Battaglia. Maybe some Topi. Uh, obviously, we've got American influences. Mobius, probably things like that. Even even some French artists. All kinds of different stuff. So this will be really fun. Settle in. I've got some really really interesting pieces. Um, I I one thing I realized really really quickly as I started to do this video is Walter Simonson does not sell his original art. So the only way that you're going to find really scans of his original art is there's two artist editions. One of them I have, um, and then um, if he ever collaborated with another inker, you can find pieces that potentially they sold. But uh, I was like, oh shoot, that's right. So. Beyond that, though, I actually was still able to pull a lot of really, really interesting stuff and um, nice big scans. So I never realized that he had done an alien adaptation. I don't know how that sort of slipped past me because I have quite a few what I would consider old school alien books. But the stuff is nice. I mean, he did a really, really good job on it. Um, it's got that real interesting coloring that they did kind of, I guess, in the early 80s. Uh, where it was almost, uh, well, probably was a hand-colored watercolor or dyes. I don't know what they use, but, um, yeah, there's a certain era of back issues that you'll get that has this weird kind of splotchy uh, colors. It's okay. Sometimes it's a little dark. I, I find sometimes it sits in this, like, medium range of, like, value that's kind of funky. Um, these are recolored pieces. Now, this is pretty controversial stuff just because um, whenever Marvel does reprints and recolor stuff or amplifies the colors, it looks weird. I mean, let's just face facts. The, technically, the colors might be better. It doesn't mean that it is better. Um, <laughs> in terms of an aesthetic, I don't know. I mean, it, it's you know, it's all subjective. If you're into really contemporary color, I am. Honestly, I love I love stuff that goes well past comics. Um, but um, I, I don't know. Sometimes the stuff just doesn't work. I appreciate their attempt. <clears throat> they, the thing, honestly, what they really need is they need artists to art direct these books. It sounds weird, but I'm serious about this. They hire these people that are fans of art, have gone to art school and stuff like that, but they need people that actually have been in the trenches and understand this shit. Um, because it's like, I would probably have the pages put on a newspaper type stock looking paper. I would really meticulously try to emulate how the color is printed and I'd get like five to 10 copies of back issues of a book. And I would look at how, how it looks and I would try to get a very pristine version of like the best newsprint copy that you could get. This is this is why I'll make a lot of money <laughs> doing things like this. <laughs> so you have to understand what the fans want. Give them what they want. So this is cool. I, I actually have a piece that was inked by Bernie Wrightson of him. This is, um, it looks like it's dated 2004. Yeah, February 16th, 2004. This is really nice. Really, really good. He even did, um, there's a Marvel DC crossover that's really interesting. This is cool. I like this a lot. A lot of times where I'll search for my big um, images um, is instead of using Google, I use a search engine called Yandex, Y-A-N-D-E-X. Um, and uh, you can find kind of bigger scans there. Easier, let's put it that way. The only thing you have to watch out, though, for is um, some of the files could be um, 
problematic on your computer, so uh, procurer of JPEGs, beware. <laughs> this is really cool. So I never knew he did this. This is um, oh, it's a crossover. Is it like it's oh shoot, what was it? Oh, Terminator RoboCop. It looks cool. I I I would definitely check out this comic book. I mean. <laughs> two robots fighting it out simonson does incredible robots so um you know he's really good with technology i've got some really great star wars stuff in here this was nice so the very first thing that i ever saw of um simonson i believe was orion it was probably a reprint although i do know that aaron weisenfeld showed me thor at his house when aaron was finishing up team seven we became friends and um you know i'd go to his house and hang out with him sometimes and um he had like you know like a couple short boxes of comics in his apartment and um yeah he turned me on to walter simonson thor stuff and said it was a big influence on him and um uh, you know that was good enough for me that was an exciting time for me because when i started working at wildstorm i started to have like a peer group of of close friends that not only were badass artists but um could tell me like a little bit about the history of comics which at that point i really only knew um from plucking around myself for a year or two. This is a great piece. I see I see Wills Portacio being influenced by Walter Simonson too, for sure. Um, there's just these little things that Simonson does. Wills, Wills is pretty, has a stylish look to his work. Simonson definitely, I think, brings that in. I, I see parallels with Her Howard, Howard Chaikin too, and I think someone had mentioned that um, Chaikin and um, Walter Simonson have like a relationship. So this was interesting. One of these, I think, is Simonson. But um, these are postcards that all these different artists sketched on. Um, so it was kind of fun. But you got Bill Hanna, Bob Kane, another Bob Kane. Um, I can zoom in. So Bill Hanna. It would be interesting to do a Bill Hanna um, video. Bob Kane, Bob Kane. Uh, Dennis Rodier. I'm not really familiar with... Um, his name or work this is another one another one jerry ordway badass another jerry ordway uh i can't read what that says oh and thank you for all the recommendations um on um this is john bogdanov you i gotta do a, a john he's great john bogdanov here's the simonson but um yeah uh Lots of really good recommendations for videos moving forward. So this this was inked by I believe by Bob we Bob Wycheck, and Wycheck had sold some of this work, so I was able to get a few scans of Bob Wycheck's inks. And what I think of um, Nestor Redondo or oh god who was it? It was someone pretty interesting on him. This is cool. This was, um, I guess, like a sketch or a commission that he did for someone. Really, really nice, actually. It's really solid, but it's loose, too. It's got his stylishness to it. And it's just a badass piece. Love these big feet and the, um, the armor on the boots. This was nice, too. So this is a jam piece with um, Jim Lee, Mark Silvestri, John Romita Jr., um, lots of inkers that I know, Bat... John Livesey, Scott Collins, I don't know, but um, Jason Gorder, Bren, Brenton, Mick Gray, and Walter Simonson um, did some stuff on it, probably up here. This looks familiar. I don't know who did this. Kind of fun. The thing, honestly, like I'm going to all say this, when collectors come up to me with pieces like this and they're all excited and enthusiastic and they want you to throw something on it, I know where these pieces are ultimately going to go and it's this auction so i don't like to work on them because i know they're going to flip them and they always want they always want it for free it's is this will be so fun for you to, to work on sorry i'm sorry if that sounds nasty but it's like you know if you're going to flip it then why should i draw on it for free <laughs> you want to make money i want to make money <laughs> This is cool pencil drawing really really nice man it's so good this was 
This was Simonson and I think Ernie Chan. Here goes my phone. Um, John Carter from Mars. Very cool. We're going to get into some really interesting stuff. What I did is I actually went over to Walter's um, Twitter and started going through the, the Twitter account. And um, he, he posts some really, really interesting stuff. Some great Star Wars pieces, some uh, stuff that he's working on um, currently. Really, really good. Really good. Um, I've got a funny picture of him with his wife dressed up for Halloween. This is great. And we definitely need to do a Gil Kane video. This definitely has the Mobius vibes, too. Oh, shoot. I didn't mean to do that. <laughs> and I apologize if these videos have been spilling over a little bit. Like, when I when I pull the images, I kind of know based on about how many I pull. It's not a number count, but I can tell by looking in the folder if it's going to go over. This will definitely go over probably by five to eight minutes. But um, I will be more mindful of that as we move forward. This is so good, man. Oh, I love this. This is really, really cool. He's got a very, like, um, as a kid, I had these things called the Star Wars sketchbooks that were little, um, they're not that small. They're, they're probably 80-page books that are um, kind of this dimension. And they did one for each movie. Um, and they're um, design sketches from uh, Joe Johnston that are kind of like that. And, uh, you know, although Sid Mead didn't work on them, but uh, you can kind of see that Simonson probably was into stuff like this. So these are some of his um, Star Wars covers. They're very cool. He does such good spaceships. This is a nice pose, actually, Helena. This is tough. Oh, Star Wars. You're so fun. He did some great Lando Calrissian stuff. Where do you see this Lando stuff that I have? It's so good. This Vader got a little flat. This is nice. I think he did this really recently. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Dude can still... You know, it's funny, it's a, a fight, but he can still throw a knockout punch, for sure. This was called Judas Coin. I'm not familiar with the book, but the art looks really, really good. And again, it's to me, it harkens back to like Dino Battaglia, Sergio Topi, uh, Michaluzzi. It's definitely got like a European sort of flavor for me and maybe, maybe other artists that you could point out too so this was interesting this is another page from the robocop uh, terminator book he shared this on twitter i believe these are nice man so tom palmer inks tom palmer's good man really nice lando he did a great job on him david michelini Yeah, the one company that I think has knocked it out of the ballpark, and I credit Scott Doombeer for this because he's such a hardcore fan of original art, is the artist editions that IDW did. They, they understood how to do reprints, even though they're not obviously reprinting comics, but that's what I'm talking about. You really need someone with a vision um, and, and an, an, an intimate understanding of it. Scott Doombeer is someone who's been passionate about original art since he was a teenager, so he was the perfect person to uh, do it. He worked as editor in chief at Wildstorm. Yeah, this is so good. Man, that is a kick ass splash page. Really powerful. This is awesome, too. God, man. The sense of scale is just killer. This was awesome, too. Punch. Really nice position of the feet here. Oh my gosh, this is 1981. Yeah, Walter's line is something that you could really study, and, and it's just fascinating because you could literally just isolate like a little section, like this little part right here. Let me go. Like if someone showed me just this, 
I could probably tell it was Walter Simonson just by the different line weights that he uses. This line right here, this swirly stuff in here, it's very, very identifiable. Even this little explosion right here. Um, and that's, that's like powerful calligraphy. This is a more recent sketch. Again, really, really nice. Man, super cool. Very fun to see his pencils. This was a funny picture of him um, and, and his wife, Wheezy, Louise Simonson. But, uh, yeah, them dressed up as, like, alien. <laughs> That's so funny. <laughs> the guns are cool. Damn. Yeah. You couldn't really walk around with this one probably right now. Um, but the, this looks a little more sci-fi, but... I threw this in. This was a Jack Kirby piece. The reason I threw it in is I wanted to make sure that we're tying the ideas in. But, um, you know, stuff like this... Um, has little pieces of the characteristics that we do see in Walter Simonson stuff. Stylish line, um, big, just chunky shapes, um, exciting, dynamic stuff. But it's it's very um, almost based at times like in an abstract um, patterns with the, the big shapes and stuff that they use and stylish line. So this was cool. This is from 1976. This is from one of the artist editions, I believe. It might even be the one that I have. I don't have it in my office right now, but uh, I have the Beta Ray Bill one. And this is Bernie Wrightson and um, Simonson. So Wrightson inks over um, Walter's pencils. Pretty interesting. This is from Judas Coin pencils really really nice man the girls are super pretty these guys playing cards are awesome and just all of this is so good i mean this is a grand slam like layout pencils whatever you want to call it but man this is really really good really good So hopefully for Simonson fans, this was a little outside the box in terms of what you maybe expected or anticipated in a video, but um, also stuff that maybe you haven't seen, you know, which which makes it kind of fun, you know, the opportunity to see things like this if you're a fan to get a glimpse into um, drawings and parts of the drawing process that you might not be used to. Great hands. Man, those are nice. You can see how he's putting that wedge in to base the the palm it's really solid damn it's good this is um in the artist edition they they have sometimes these layovers where you'll get to um see the the logo and then you turn the page and you're able to have like a piece of vellum uh, and then the original will be underneath it it's a really really fun part of the artist editions this is a great piece too really great use of space and negative space i mean this is this is a dynamic cover it's it's very very cool it reads interesting too i talk about this in patreon lessons and reviews um although this guy is kind of facing into the the page you know he's he's kind of looking in um this spaceship really helps it out because the thing is is you kind of circle this way but because of this and because of her facing this way he ultimately does send you out of the page which is important because um anytime you have someone on a piece looking this way you run the risk of um you know in american comics since we read left to right um you, you kind of want to direct people out of a piece this way or up this way or down this way um and uh, he's able to really have this nice circular motion but Again, this ship coming forward and then her facing this way really helps it. And even this shape actually here on his knee. Some of it's that's fortuitous. You know, you have objects that are in the drawing that um, just help you out. This piece was, this was from that DC Marvel crossover, which I kind of think that I was aware that had happened at some point in the past, but interesting for sure. Those are tough um, things. Oh, so this was interesting. So this was a submission that he did. I, I'm assuming when he was a kid or, or a young adult um, to uh, Warren Comics, and it's very, you know, you know, very early looking stuff. I mean, you you can see that this is a person trying to to draw comics, and the stuff is stiff. 
generic, you know, and I don't mean those in any sort of uh, negative way. It's just how everyone, most everyone starts drawing is you kind of learn the information and you kind of put it down very literally, you know, and you try to use perspective. It's a little stiff and stuff like that, but man, you, I, I picked this because I think it should be encouraging to people. Again, when you can see legends in, in the field and how far that they took this stuff, when you see something like this, I hope that one, one it just, it makes you go, hey, you know what, if I work hard at this, I could actually get better at this. But, you know, there's nothing wrong with this page. I mean, these two bottom panels with these guys right here is quite cool. This isn't so bad. I mean, he could have definitely have done, uh, pulled in maybe closer or cropped it differently than, you know, this is. But yeah, it looks, you know, it looks to me like a teenager or a young adult um, who hasn't drawn a lot of pages trying to cut their teeth on some samples, which is good. This is awesome. X Titans. Not sure what year this would have been done. And this is this is Terry Austin Inks. I'm amazed I can remember all this shit. I'm telling you, some of these videos, I'm so far out of like my knowledge base and comfort zone in terms of, you know, just what I can add to it. And the fact that I'm able to um, retain all this is crazy. Some days my brain feels like it's about to like come off the hinges. <laughs> this is great. I was like, how many of these videos have I done? I'm losing it. Oh, this is really cool. Okay, so we should be... Oh, yeah, this was great. This was, I think, the last JPEG that I pulled. This is such a kick-ass piece. This might be... Shoot, I'd only be guessing. I think this is from Judas Coin, but uh, again, don't hold me to that because I don't know. But this is cool. kind of has our Arthur Adams vibes. Ah, this is so badass. Oh, I love this. So hopefully that was fun. Like I said, I was, you know, because of that he doesn't really sell original art, it was a little more challenging to get this video together um, and get key pieces um, and pencils and inks um, from different books, another alien piece. Uh, but, uh, you know, at that point I was, I was struggling for 20 minutes trying to figure out what to do, cobbling this together. But Ultimately, um, I think that the pencil drawings and all the um, sort of behind the scenes actually do make this quite quite a nice video and something a little different. Uh, this was really good too. I'm always fascinated at um, when they did movie adaptations in the early '80s because although Beta, Beta V V, well, whatever you want to call it, VCRs existed. Um, yeah, I'd be curious of how they went about it. If they would, if they would watch the movie at their house, like on a beta, and snap photos, and then use the photos for reference. Um, I mean, you could pause the video for a little while, but it'll turn off uh, at some point. So, yeah, kind of interesting. So, all right, you guys have a great day. I actually, it was funny because Farben mentioned, um, uh, what's the? It's the the magazine where they interview comic book artists. I can't think of it off the top of my head, but like, um, most of you'll know what I'm talking about. It's like like. It's run for a million years. There's hundreds of issues. But those would actually be interesting to go through because I actually have a pretty good collection of those magazines. And um, so maybe we'll do like an open book where I read interviews with artists and we can look at their work and then I can um, sort of regurgitate uh, the things that I've learned from the interviews of them talking about their processes without having to guess. Um, uh, so so that would be cool. But um, yeah, yeah. We'll finish this influence chain with maybe two more artists, uh, and then we'll um, regroup, and I'll look at everyone's suggestions, and we'll come up with a reverse one where we start with a modern-day artist and swing back. Sorry, right, I'll talk to you guys later. Have a good one, and I apologize that this went over, but um, I will start shaving them down and grabbing less images. All right, later.